Hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to Help for HDTV. May is HD Awareness Month, and we have done a series of interviews about HD awareness and what our families have had to endure due to the lack of HD awareness in so many different spaces and to so many different parts of our lives. So today we have our dear friends on with us, Carlos and Stu. Truly, I think Carlos is one of my favorite people walking this planet. I love right before we got on here, Stu said he inspires him every day. And I think he inspires so many of us with his strength and his love for life. But because Carlos loves life and loves to dance and loves to go out and the beach and swim in the ocean, and he just wants to experience all of life, he does deal with some public impact and he has. And so I think that we can start out, talk to us a little bit, my favorite story, how you guys met and how you decided to get married. We literally, we met 22, I'm not even sure, 23 years ago, a long time ago. It seems like yesterday. And I literally saw him at a party we were at. And it was, he was far across the, through all these, I'd say a smoke filled room, but I don't think there was smoke there. And I just, my friend that I was with saw the smile on my face and he said, I might as well introduce you. And we met and almost every single place I went after that, restaurants, bars, beach, Carlos was there. <laughs> he did good. And, and we started dating. And then the marriage thing's a funny story. We were in Honolulu, Hawaii, and we're walking along and it was just gorgeous. I think it was our third trip to Hawaii. And I said something about marriage. And he turned to me and he says, honey, of course I would marry you. And I thought, what, what did I just say? What? You know? And I'm like, Wow. And then literally it was a Saturday night. I think they still do this in Honolulu. Fireworks just happened to go up over the ocean. Uh, it was the timing was incredible. And I said, I guess I'm supposed to do something here. Yeah. And I got down to my knee and I actually said, you'll marry me? And he said, I said, yes, of course I will. And we decided for May, because I think this was October in Hawaii, and we had to go to New York to get married at that time. And the best thing I've ever done in my life, it was my most single best accomplishment of anything I've done. And I love him more every single day. And uh, he's amazing. That's we're both crying now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was getting a little boring, but yeah. Everyone... No, no, I'm like a little speechless. Love like that is, is so uncommon. You just don't hear about it these days, or maybe people don't talk about it enough, but thank you for bringing so much warmth into the the space here. I know you guys so well as far as your travels. And I'm sure a lot of people listening have watched a lot of your posts and how happy the two of you are just to like Katie said, experience life together. But with traveling, you're going into new areas and places where people don't know Carlos, like the safety of your own home and town and your nice little house where people, your neighbors know Carlos and that safety zone. Can you tell us about a time that you and Carlos experienced any sort of lack of awareness that has turned into something maybe unfortunate for both of you. So you're right about the travels. We travel a lot. And one thing Carlos insists on, which is amazing, he's really smart beyond his times, if you ask me, is photos, as you've seen. He just, he wants them on there. Our last cruise, I got the, the poor man's internet. And I learned it won't upload very well on Wi-Fi on a cruise ship when he wants like 500 pictures. But yeah, so as time goes on, I, I keep learning more and more as a caregiver. And it's endless things that I've seen from good and bad. But one of them I think that sticks out the most might be Mexico, the Port of Vallarta Police. Carlos loves to dance. And yeah. we don't always get to the gym like we're supposed to like ever. And the dancing, he will dance for two, three hours, everything going. And he inspires people dancing on, on, on cruises that haven't danced and so forth. And when we were coming home after three hours in Puerto Vallarta, the police on one of these white, whatever it was, Honda pickup truck with machine guns, that's how they do it in Mexico, coming right at us. I thought, oh my goodness. And it's all in Spanish. And and they're patting us down and searching. I'm trying to explain he has Huntington's disease and they're going through my wallet and all this. And I'm pretty sure with the, I don't want to beat up the Mexican police, but they were trying to find something on us because Carlos looked, obviously, I'm going to say extremely drunk or aren't drugs. But I just kept trying to show him and I still carry this card today. And I actually have it in Spanish now. That's the explains 
he will appear intoxicated and so forth and to call the police or the hospital or me. And I think that's what freed us in a nutshell. The other one I'll just point out was we've gone to London quite a lot since I was born in England. And he absolutely loves London, I guess. It's neat. I just found this company called Psycho Bunny. It's a shirt made by a British company sold in America. And it's Peruvian cotton. And Carlos is from Peru. So I thought, what a match this is. I wish they cost a little less, but, uh, but I'm wearing them. And anyway, so London, there's a club that he likes to dance. And we've gone there. I've gone there since I was 18 every year. And then I started bringing him pretty much every year. COVID came. We couldn't come. We're in line. And when we get up to the door, there's the manager and the door person there just staring at him, looking, scowling, looking. And uh, I see a no. And then they said, have you been here before? And I said, yes. And I said, it's his birthday. We're from Florida. We've come every single year. He's been wanting to come here for three years. And he was diagnosed at that time with Huntington's disease three years ago. And I explained it's a neurological condition. They're looking. They said, no, it's a private party tonight. And off we went. There was no private party. That's what that was. Carlos, how did that make you feel? Sad. Sad. Yeah. So, yeah, it really, I think the whole reason we're in London was to go to that. We ended up at some other little bar that wasn't as much fun. And by the way, the door person there said, oh, I don't know. And I said, no, now that person understood. And I said, we won't be any trouble and everything. However, on the dance floor, I'd left him for two seconds and I come back and you've got what turns out to be a nurse handing him what appears to be orange juice. Oh my goodness, what is that? So of course I take the orange juice, not knowing what might be in this. And he said, no, I'm a nurse. He needs it because the drugs he's on. Like, no, that's not going to help. And he said, no, and he was almost insisting. And I pulled him aside. I said, if you're a nurse, he has Huntington's disease. And if you did think something was wrong, you would bring them to the bar and you would order it from the bar like that. You don't just hand people a drink. I said, I still can't give him this. Me and him made friends. A little later on, he's dancing and I see people like again left because he'll dance endlessly. I need help. I need recruits to help dance. And I get tired. <laughs> And there's people that are actually pushing on him a little bit, pushing him away a little bit. It's breaking my heart. I'm like, my God, could you stop? The gay pride event we went to, for some reason, he really wanted to go to this gay pride. And sometimes I wonder how much he knows about the disease and doesn't know. But it seemed like he really wanted to go to it. He didn't have a huge interest before. But we went and we're watching the parades come in. And of course, he's shaking and he's banging to this guy. And this friend, this guy standing there is like looking and getting madder and madder. And I thought, do I say something? Don't I say something? And he's banging, banging, and then he starts pushing. So then his friend got there and he goes, thank God you got this guy away from me or something. So him, I did educate. I pulled him aside and I said, he's absolutely sober. This is a disease called Huntington's disease. And he may not be walking next year. I'm sorry he's banging into you. And maybe I probably would have behaved the same as you did a few years ago, because I didn't get this either. But I said, have some compassion and realize this. The guy actually did start crying. He was quite upset by the whole thing. Education is so huge. Yeah, I think we're all human. And until you're touched by something like Huntington's where it's rare and you don't, you didn't know about it until you did, you just don't know how you re react. I feel like generally I'm pretty compassionate in, in a public setting, but I also do believe that's because of the HD community. Prior to that, I might have been a little mean and not like, to somebody who couldn't help it, but more of like people who are rude, I'm going to be really rude back, right? And then I think now I'm like, gosh, some of those people may have been rude just because of a psychiatric symptom or a cognitive symptom that they couldn't control. And so there is, we are human, but I think it's so important that you took the time to educate him and not react in like a way of being upset or angry or things like that, because now this person knows about the disease they move forward in life knowing about the disease. For the rest of their lives, you have changed their behaviors towards people. And maybe it isn't HD the next time, but at least they've changed the way that they're going to respond. And also maybe the next time it will be somebody with HD and he can be a lot more warm and welcoming. Yeah, I've come to learn. Somebody told me years ago, somebody's cranky, bad mood, acting bizarre. What happened in their life today or before or whatever? And I don't know if I should say the airline by name, but we normally have very good experience with this airline. But unfortunately, we came in contact with 
someone that told us as a plane was boarding that we were trying to get on because ours was canceled and there's one right at the gate going right where we're going that uh, as a disability is your problem not and uh, i don't know if i should say the airline but this airlines and i thought yeah you're right it is my problem but i'm just asking you could you make an announcement we like to get on there. Matter of fact, I'll pay for an extra seat. Somebody wants to come up, whatever you want. I said, I just try to get home. People are never cease to amaze me, but you are right. Everyone has a story. I guess we have to keep that in mind, but to say a disability is your problem, not mine is that's, that's pretty low. It was crazy. And I get working with the public and demanding people and then probably a lot of complaints and stuff, but <laughs> I will say this because it was amazing a little after the Port of Vallarta trip. And I say this because this is Oh, Royal Caribbean cruise. We're there. We have our one drink minimum, partly because if you're on a cruise, have you seen the price of beer? And we're sitting there having our beer and I saw security looking and building. And I thought, oh, here we go again. And I'm thinking of the Port of Vallarta police. And then uh, there were a couple more security. And I thought, oh no. And then they left. And the next day, I'd say the guy that was in charge came up and he said to me, you take really good care of your park. And I thought, look at that. Royal Caribbean has trained its staff somewhere. This, why isn't this happening in the police departments? And by the way, I've been through two police academies, a correction academy, a probation academy, and I've taught at them. No one taught me any of this stuff. What your organization's doing with the police is amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So thank you. Needed. And it's so interesting you say that because Katrina and I have a very close friend of ours outside of the HD community, and she she does all her nonprofit work in autism. And Royal Caribbean, she's actually going on another cruise. She keeps going on cruise after cruise with Royal Car Caribbean because <laughs> they book these cruises specifically for children with autism and bring in specialists and bring in therapists. And they the whole cruise staff know that these kids are here and they have autism and a lot of them are nonverbal and different things. And they support the family through the whole entire cruise experience. So I have got the utmost respect for Royal Caribbean after what Katrina and I have learned from Rochelle. So I'm really thankful to hear that they treated someone from our community with respect. Right. And Carlos, I am excited to see you in Puerto Rico in a couple of weeks. The way I let's see I who dances the night away. I'm so excited every morning. Puerto Rico's coming. Yeah, I, I get to see Katie and Katrina. Are we gonna dance with Carlos? Yeah, oh. <laughs> yeah but, oh, very excited. Yeah, we are too. We are. We will dance the night away with you. Bring your yeah. dancing shoes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, just real quick I think we have covered quite a bit and thank you so much for telling us these stories because I know that they are sometimes hard to tell but the more awareness we have the better about what our loved ones have to endure and why HD Awareness Month is important real quick are kind of our questions that we've been asking Stu who do you fight for? Carlos <laughs> HD I'm becoming an HD advocate listen when we travel the but the lady next to me on our flight knows every single thing about HD. They usually all know it. The whole front row does, the whole front section. The gate agents usually hear about it when I asked about pre-boarding. I am absolutely codependent with, other than a mom, no family in this country. Carlos is my absolute everything. And, and I'm his everything from what I can see, too. We complete each other. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. You guys do. Most yeah. amazing couple walking this planet. One last question. If there was one thing that you would like the world to know about Huntington's disease, what would it be and why? I want people to know how difficult HD is and to have compassion. And please understand that this can happen like it did with us, just here it is. Even if you know it's in your family, it doesn't make it any better. I want them to have more compassion and I want them to, when they vote, please vote for medical cures and those politicians. We can do this, Cure HD today. Yes, absolutely. Carlos, you have any final thoughts for us, love? What do you first say to your niece? She's dropping her off at the airport to come see me a little after diagnosis. And of course, she they grew up very close together. She's crying a lot. 
she's amazing to him. And what did you tell him? What did you tell him? Well, I did. You have HD, but you told her something. You told her not to cry. I'm here now, and I'm happy. Yeah. And they might cure me yet. Yeah, I thought I know her. Be happy. Don't be sad. Be happy. And she answered. Yeah, and she'll be joining us in Puerto Rico. Ah. We're so excited. For we all need to learn how to live to be happy, Carlos. And thank you for being the light in so many of our lives because you shine bright, my friend. I think that'll do it for today. You guys, don't forget to this video and to subscribe to the channel below and ring the bell with notifications for more videos like this come out. Until next time.